My name is Juanita Martinez and I'm from Brighton, Colorado and I'm a retired school teacher. I'm here in Washington, D.C. today because I'm going to have dinner with President Barack Obama tomorrow night. This is crazy, it's insane, I can't hardly believe it. I don't know if I believe it still. I just hope I remember the questions that I've been wanting to ask him. <laughs> it would be kind of cool to say, uh, hey, Mr. President, could you pass this all, please? My name is Ken Knight, and I'm a United States Army veteran. Thank you. It's still not real, to be honest, until I see him. And tomorrow, if I get to shake his hand, it's going to be the most special moment I've ever had in my life. I just didn't think something like this would ever happen. And now here I am, 12 hours away from meeting the President of the United States, and it's pretty cool. Sorry. My name is Casey Helbling. I'm from Minneapolis, and I've got a small business. It's a software development company. It's for real. It's really <laughs> happening. Well, I think it's going to be a pretty frank conversation. I think it's going to be just a couple of guys having dinner and talking about whatever comes to mind. Like, some of the things that I think are really interesting is just, what does a president's day look like? What time does it start? What time does it end? Those are really interesting things that I don't think dudes like me, don't, you know, we don't ever get to hear about. Have fun. Tell hello for us. I'm eating dinner with the president. When they called, I pretty much dropped my teeth. It was just, what, what? And I said, you're kidding. My name's Wendy Smith. I'm from a little town in Indiana, Corydon, Indiana, and I am a retired college teacher. It didn't feel real. And now I'm here. You know, we drove into the city and I was like, this is real. This is one of the biggest events of my life. I'm really looking forward to meeting the other winners. Four people out of this entire United States, and here I am. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. There you go. You got it? Yeah. What do you think? A lot of us were calm at first, and once we sat down and saw the proximity and how close he was going to be to us and next to us, all of us, I think, started getting a little fidgety and maybe taking deeper breaths. And then he walks in the back door and he says, Hello, everybody. Good to see you. It's pleasure. It's good pleasure. to see you. Casey? Casey, that's right. So nice to meet you. And you. I'm Wendy. How are you, it's Wendy? An honor. Good to see you. Good he sat down. I mean, it's like he knew you. It's like he was your neighbor or your cousin that came over. The girls, I just left. They had dinner ahead of time, but I sat while they were eating. They're getting ready uh, to do all their homework so they can have a good Halloween. Will you be uh, walking them? You know, the uh, no. It, it is. Uh, <laughs> you don't. You don't want to. You, you don't want to go out. Uh, I did. Uh, Halloween with them in 2007, right before the primary. And I wore this big mask, so nobody knew it was me. And the Secret <laughs> Service at that time only had like two, so they were kind of in the back. And, uh, and it, we, we pulled it off, but now the Secret Service has a different sort of yeah. approach yes, to things. Yeah, yes. <laughs> they're, 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 pretty, they're pretty intense. Yeah. <laughs> so. Tell me, or what you're seeing in, in your life, in the community, what, you know, what's on your mind. It doesn't have to be some high pollutant policy issue. Just give me a sense of what's going on out there. My concern is, of course, public education. I subbed last year for a class, and there were like 33 students, and three didn't even have desks. So it's, it's gotten really rough. The point is we want to bring everybody up, and that means that we've got to make sure that we're, you know, the kids in the school where we need to taught you know, that they've got the kinds of education. And, you know, that's, that's the question. Are we making investments so everybody has a shot? You know, which, since I didn't come from a wealthy family or a powerful family, it's, the only reason I'm here is because somebody invested in me or my mom or my grandparents. Or, you know. I was expecting him to be like this bigger than life figure, the president, but we were just having a conversation. We were just everyday people having a conversation over like a, a dinner table and it was really cool. Like, your day, tell me your day. Yeah. Like, what do you I do? mean, my, my usual schedule is, I'm not a morning guy. Yeah. I'm more like a, a late night guy. So I'll wake up about seven. I'll go up to the gym, get down to the office about nine. And then for, basically from nine to 6.30, it is just packed, you know, okay. so nonstop. At 6.30, even if I'm really busy, I stop, go upstairs, I'll have dinner with the girls. That's awesome. You know, we'll, I'll just spend time with them, probably till about eight. Mm -hmm. And then basically I use from 
8 to midnight or 1 o'clock, uh, that's when I'm doing a lot of writing. So what about if there's like an, something big international going on, you get, they come in the middle of the night, do they wake you up? I'm like, oh yeah. They call you up, yeah. you, you, you get those calls. I mean, the last one of those that I got was uh, Fukushima. Oh yeah. When the tsunami hit. So yeah, I think it was probably about three in the morning. I think you can tell he's a very sincere man, but he was very open with us and very forthcoming with his answers. What negative effects do you think you've had in your life by not having your father? in your life? You know, as I look back, you know, I, I only remember my father for one month my whole life, when I was 10. And it wasn't until much later in life that I realized, like, he gave me my first basketball, and it was shortly thereafter that I became this basketball fanatic. And he took me to my first uh, jazz concert, and it was sort of shortly thereafter that I became really interested in jazz and music. So, so what it makes you realize is how much of an impact, even if it's only a even month. if it's only a month that they have on you. But I, I think probably the, the most important thing was he, um, his absence. I think contributed to me really wanting to be a good dad. Uh, because I think not having him there made me say to myself, you know what, I want to make sure that my girls feel like they've got somebody who they can rely on. And, yeah. My surprise was he was really candid about where we're at. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. You know, what happens on the ground with uh, people organizing and talking to their neighbors, you know, that's the stuff that just matters uh, right. so much. And it, it happens below the radar screen. So a lot of times, all that activity, just like in 2008, it may not register in polls right away, but over time, that's what builds, you know, the kind of momentum and energy that really makes a difference. You know, this election is more important in some ways than 2008 because we will not be able to finish what we started and the stuff that we've done will get rolled back if, right. if we don't win this next time out. So it's a, it's, a, it's a lot at stake. I'll do whatever I can. I'll do the phone banking. I'll make calls. I'll have the conversations with my friends. You know what? Nobody said this stuff would be easy. And I, I do believe that we can get through these really difficult times and come out stronger, but it takes time. And one of the things I've learned about myself in this job is you know, I'm pretty persistent. And when you look at history, um, you know, I try to remind people, Brown versus the Board of Education was 1954. You didn't get the Voting Rights Act until 1965. And the same is gonna be true on anything worthwhile. You know, it, do, it just doesn't happen overnight. And all you wanna be doing is making sure that you know you keep your eye on you know that north star uh, of the kind of country you want to be in and keep on making steady progress you know it's on the path right yeah so well listen you, you guys are terrific and uh it gives me a lot of energy to have a chance to meet all of you it's as good as it gets so i appreciate you guys Thanks. Thank, thank you so much you. it's just been the most wonderful experience I think all of us that were here kind of got tears in our eyes when it was all over with. It was really amazing. He is such a real person. He's such a genuine man. Thank you so much. We had a great time. No, he's just a very sincere man. I was very impressed. It was really surreal. It was really amazing. I hope he does more of these. I think that it's just a great way to connect. Love to Michelle. Take care. Thank you so much.